to the Ganga. And he had a loader. You know, this is a, like a cup for taking snan and so. So he had that, but there were many other Brahmins and they also had loader. So he said, I'll go in the, in the Ganga, take my snan. Then when I come out, how will I know which is my loader? So he takes a, a ball of Ganga mat and makes a ball and puts it on top of the loader. He goes in swimming very happily. When he comes out, he sees all the loters have little mud balls on it. Because the others thought, oh, maybe this is a new Vedic rule, which I didn't know yet. So better let's do it also, no? Let's be up to standard. So this is a little bit imitation. This is the imitation. We imitate. We don't understand what it's all about but we imitate anyway. So this is the funny part of Krishna Kosh. Let me see if we can get any other imitation stories. So, Srila Prabhupada showed us the Vedic culture and to a certain degree, imitation is permitted. But it shouldn't be imitation, it should be following the orders of your guru. You cannot understand everything he says, but you do it because he says it. Like sometimes, you know, in psychology, they have recognized that imitation is the most practiced way of gaining some experience. That in the world, we have seen that if somebody does it, another person imitates him or her. That is the most common thing, that m people learn more by imitation than by hearing. And you can see it, the little kids, when they see the father speak the Gayatri Mantra, then they also sit down and they do like they are speaking the Gayatri Mantra. And like, imitation is, is a high popular thing in life. And that's why the fashion works on imitation. Uh, when the people make somebody pay famous, even the greed for money is by imitation. Everybody is running after money, then you think, well, I got better do that also, no? So we have a very big tendency in us <laughs> to simply make a show. It's, in a way, it's sad, no? We just want to make the show, even though we don't understand what it's all about. So then our luck is if we imitate a great devotee. But imitating a great devotee means go out and preach. Imitating doesn't mean you go and sit on the Vyasasana and see and, and wait to see what will happen, no? <laughs> huh? As a matter of fact, that's like, this, today I saw this, there was this book being prepared and I was writing the introduction or something and then under that was my name, Srila Bhakti blah, 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 Maharaj. No? If I would sign that way, everybody would simply immediately see this is a bloody idiot. He calls himself Mr. or Mrs. You don't do that. You don't give titles to yourself. Others may give titles out of respect, but you don't give titles to yourself. Like some sannyasi sometimes print a card, they say, Sonto Maharaj. <laughs> that is not right. You never do that. Srila Bhakti Rakhang Sridharaj, on his titles, on of his books, he said, B.R. Shrida. That's what he wanted to be on his books. <coughs> now, when the disciple publishes a book of his guru, then he may have a different feeling. He may say, His Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada, and they feel it's okay. The disciples feel it's okay, but uh, <coughs> it doesn't look very good. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
So therefore we have here Temai apetakila chapaleri pake dante drita kridana ke nuvartini chakru kripam yadya pitul yadarshana shushru shamane munayol pabashini Though the sages saw everything equally, they showed mercy to me, by which I, though a boy, developed sense control gave up child's play and all agitation, became obedient, served attentively <coughs> and spoke little. Commentary. Narada Muni had controlled senses, Dante, had given up childish play, Adrita Kridanake. Those sages saw equally good tempered and bad tempered. Those who are praiseworthy and those who are to be criticized, those who have good conduct, contact, conduct and those who are sinful, tulya darshana, and thus they show not, and thus they should not show mercy to one and reject in disgust another. And those who are, no, let me see again. Those who have good <coughs> contact and those who are sinful. Tulya Darshana, and thus they should not show mercy to one and reject in disgust another. However, they showed mercy to me. Though great devotees such as Bharat and Prahlad see equally, they also show some partiality concerning giving mercy. They give mercy to Narada for the first time. Did not depend on Narada's good qualities and show of respect. He developed the good qualities by their mercy. Then those qualities became the cause of further mercy. It must be explained that the cause of their mercy was not due to their seeing good qualities in Narada. If one says that they, that if one says that though they had equal vision, they showed mercy because he showed good qualities, then their equal vision would be contradicted by their seeing good and bad qualities. One should not explain in this way because then their first mercy would be prejudiced. There are two types of mercy, one which is affected by seeing material qualities and another which is not affected by seeing material qualities. The first type of mercy is explained as follows. All persons in the material world have mercy caused by qualities. All persons in the material world have mercy caused by qualities. If they see qualities, they show mercy. If the qualities are absent, they withdraw mercy. And if they see bad qualities, they show hatred. The second type of mercy is as follows. Those who are beyond the influence of material world show mercy without such causes, without dependence on seeing material qualities, since they see everything in the material world as the same. Shukadeva has said, Gira yumumukchu stoyam kwachit namumukchu shivam yatag yanamritam kalek yanino dadate nava. During this season, the mountains sometimes released their pure water and sometimes did not. Just as experts in transcendent science sometimes give the nectar of transcendental knowledge and sometimes do not. <coughs> did we call Sanyasi Maharaj? He did not. He said he will call if he finds time. But he did not call. Call him, please. In this manner, sometimes these persons show mercy to some person. When hardness of the heart caused by gunas is destroyed and becomes soft by devotion to the Lord, mercy will appear in the heart. <coughs>
Sudasatva Visheshatma Prema Suryam Sasam Yabak Ruchi Vishchita Mash Mashvinya Krita Sao Bhava Uchyate What he says? No time, huh? Okay. This, that part of Bhakti is called Bhav. <laughs> That part of bhakti is called bhava, whose essence is samvit and ladini shakti, which is one ray of the sun of prema, <coughs> which will soon rise in the heart and which softens the heart with desires to meet, serve and exchange love with the Lord. Bhakti Rasamita Singh. The four, first four stages of bhakti are understood here. Mercy of the devotees, service to the devotees, face and taking shelter of Guru. Omajana Sandasya Gyanan Janasha Lakaya Shakshun Militan Janeta Smaik Se Gurave Namaha Se Chaitanya Manu Vistam Stapitam Janabhuta Le Swayam Bhuta Kadamayam Adati Swapadanti Kam so four stages of bhakti understood have mercy of the devotees, service to the devotees, face and taking shelter of the Guru. So this is so incredible that the devotees are so merciful. Really, they are the ones who give hope. <laughs> and here it is described that they are real devotees, they give mercy without considering the qualities of somebody. You may also think about helping somebody, something like that. <laughs> huh? You may also consider, oh, I want to give somebody some, some mercy because you like him or you see he's in great need. There's some certain interaction of sympathy. But simply go out and thank it unto everybody and to give them a book and beg them, please help. I remember Namacharya. Namacharya is now in Costa Rica, the Pujari in the temple. But I met him 40 years ago. And he would go out and he would specially, uh, not specially, but he would approach all the old black ladies. Because the old black ladies, you know, they're going in the street and nobody pays attention to them, no? So he would approach them, he says, please come and help us, we have this campaign. And many times they would say, oh, I'm broke. And then he would say, you may be broke, but you look so good. <laughs> and, and then the old ladies, they would chuckle like anything and give him a donation. You know? He, he, he was a star performer of Sankirtan. Huh? So, so, you know, he just knew how to touch people's heart, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, uh, and he would also have some other uh, poems he would say, no? Uh, don't think it's funny. We need some money. Huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> things like that, and the people would just love it, the way he was doing it, you know. So, but he was giving his mercy, definitely undiscriminatively. He would not look who, who is the young guy looking at me with a smile with some money in the pocket. No, he would go to anyone and everybody and just charm their hearts into doing devotional service. So, the, doing some service, you know, getting mercy, then doing some service, and then you get face. Oh, this process is nice. This process is good. I, I like the process. I want to go on. I want to advance in this. I want to advance in this process. It is part of my life. <coughs> so in this way, the mercy of the devotees. Now here we're talking about two types of mercy. The one is which you get, and the other one which you give. Mm. The giving one. That is very good, because you can be part of the divine exchange called Sankirtan of the congregational chanting. And of course, congregational chanting, you say, where's the chanting? Well, if I say, please come and serve my Guru Dev, that's a song. Please come and take this book of Krishna, that's another song. Please give some donation for our divine dedication. It's another song. Well, Namacharya, he was a, a singer, a Sankirtan singer. He would have lots of poems to speak. So, But even if it doesn't rhyme, you still <coughs> sing. You're singing, and that is preaching is singing. When I give a class, I'm also singing to a certain degree. And not only that, if I don't sing, sing nicely, then you all get bored. And how do you know that somebody gets bored? Well, he won't come back for the next class. Vendavan Chandra, are you bored? <laughs> Vendavan Chandra! <laughs> Maharaj, don't hit your head. We need it. <laughs> so, let's, let's look at this. This giving mercy, it's one thing. What about getting mercy? Well, it doesn't depend on us so much. But if you want to take Prabhupada's mercy, then chant Hare Krishna, read his books, associate with his devotees, and do service. Then you're getting his mercy, because that's the way he gave his mercy. And this temple was made by Prabhupada. Yes, believe it or not. Prabhupada made all these temples. I did. I did. I didn't really do it. Well, our peaceful morning class is being intercepted by a bunch of guys throwing bamboos through the window. Uh, but that's life. Huh? So hadi hada. So in a way, a devotee is getting mercy by giving mercy. This is also, if you want to understand something in Krishna Consciousness, then you have to give Krishna Consciousness. You can't, you can't do anything else, you shouldn't do anything else. You give Krishna and then you get Krishna. It's like you, you chant and then you, you, you go on Harinam and you chant. Now this is a very important thing what Prabhupada stressed. No, actually Sri Ramaj stressed this very much. He said that if we are uh, if we are writing, for example, sitting down and writing, it's kirtan. It's you're doing kirtan because writing is so complex. You can't write any stupid thing. You have to write the thing. Very wonderful. So, oh, Vindavan, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> like. like uh, like writing is in so many aspects. Yesterday we got the mercy for Kito. Unbelievable mercy. You cannot believe. Two Goni ties dancing this high. They jumped in our arms. Practically, you know. 
They said, we want to go to Quito. We want to go to Quito. And I was looking at Mother Sudamash. You think they want to go? He says, I think so. I said, Vishwarupa, you think they want to go? Oh, they could go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was finally, because, I mean, to, to pay $1,000 for deities, well, it's a nice way to purify money, because people spend money for any stupid thing, you know. But uh, still, it's thousand dollars. You have to pay thousand dollars just for to worship Krishna. So that's the that's the first puja. The first puja you do by giving some money and buying these beautiful deities. And what it what it is, I Krishna is very funny, you know. But we have to be in that mood. Get mercy. Give mercy every morning. Grab your japa. Get mercy. Hari <coughs> Give mercy. Uh, go, go to the participation. And th this is really the thing. And in that mercy giving, the most important thing is, believe it or not, to take responsibility. What does it mean to take responsibility? You have to get it done that that which you do works. Now, I myself, I designed this invitation card. Because this temple had no invitation card, and it's pretty hard to find here. But if you want to come, you can get. Now we have a sign on the door, and we have an invitation card. But the invitation card is out of print. So while we are here, we are not having the invitation card. This is such a beautiful invitation card. It's very clear. It shows what we do. It shows what we offer. So by Prabhupada's grace, we can actually invite people to such a decent place like Janavi and Saraswati Kunti. Responsibility. Responsibility. I want to go up there with the yogis today to the Saraswati Kunja and I want to show you how you can do yoga in my metal floor. Because huh? <laughs> I, I encountered some opposition from the um, planning department that said it cannot be done there. I want to go there with the yogis and show them how it works. Because it's a second option yoga. Responsibility means that whatever is your job, get it done. If you don't do get it done, you wait. Oh, somebody else should get it done and invite me when it's successful that I can jump on the bandwagon hmm? mm -hmm. and just go with the, with the, yeah, that's okay. You can be of that type, but <coughs> it's, it's, it's not the top quality. Top quality is you see, what is the project? Like I give you the project to collect for Vindavan. Will anybody come say, Kishori, can I give you some money for Vindavan? No. When you say, please, today we have a meeting about all the things they are doing in Vindavan, then nobody will come. Because they think, oh, she's going to ask some money at the end. <laughs> huh? mm -hmm. So you have to say, tonight we're going to show some nectar pictures. You should see the last nectar pictures, no? And then they sit there, wow, let's hear the picture. Then in the end he says, now, are you going to help this project or not? Like we have so many activities, Krishna is doing a great job. But do people know what she's doing? Yes, the, the few people who know her, her, her Facebook, it doesn't work that way. Do people know that we have tree houses here? I don't think so. Did you ever see it on the website? Maybe. Maybe. But it's not publicized. We have not given it enough attention. So if that's my job, I have to give attention. I mean, <coughs> this is the world of... You know, we are competing. When you go out in the street, you're competing with another 8 billion people to try to get some donation or some money, some income. There's 8 billion people out there trying to get money. 
You're just one of them. Mm -hmm. So you have to make some performance. You have to put something there that people would say, I'll give it to him. So anytime, anytime we do anything, we have a project, we take responsibility upon ourselves. We have to be systematic. We have to go point by point by point. What do we do here to make it work? That is the whole question. How, what do we do to make it work? And may, we may be successful, we may not be successful. Who knows, but at least we have to try. We have to think, what are the ingredients to make this work? What are the ingredients? Like I can say congratulations to Madhusudan Maharaj. If I'm not wrong, Madhusudan Maharaj, you were constructing this place? Yes? Paramahansa Maharaj was here also. Well, this place, how many years ago we constructed this? Ten years, more or less. Huh? Ten years, more or less. I cannot believe it. This is only Bambi. Bambi. It lasted for 10 years. I cannot believe it. This is a, somebody took responsibility. Of course, some maintenance has to be done and some things like that. But look what they did. Because bamboo structure, but bamboo structure, bamboo doesn't only have a certain lifespan. And if you look after it, and if you exchange some rotten pieces, it'll last longer. But this is an amazing time for 10 years. Have we responsibly used this place for the last 10 years? Not very much, because we didn't have the people like that, no? People come and go. But the worst thing was, the Bodhis don't relate with love to each other. That is the worst thing. Sometimes we have this lack of love and and being like like worshiping each other that's also mercy mercy giving starts at the devotee level are you giving mercy to other devotees what does that mean it means i accept this guy i say yes he may not be perfect he may have done some stupid things in life <laughs> but i accept this guy <laughs> huh? i look at him i know he will do good things for Krishna, so I'm giving him attention. Giving somebody some attention is mercy. That's a way of giving mercy. Like sometimes people, they go, don't look at each other, don't speak to each other. Well, what kind of mercy is that? <coughs> That's nonsense. So we very often fall into the into the pit of indifference and things like that. Because if I take responsibility, then that responsibility, you know what that means? That responsibility means that I want to be with that person for the rest of my life. Do I want to be with Vishwarupa for the rest of my life? I wouldn't mind. I don't know if he can tolerate me that long, but, <laughs> but I think, and I cannot see any one of you who I don't want to be with. I can't. I mean, this being together means serving together. It's not just staring at each other. <laughs> God, how long do you want to stare at somebody? <laughs> huh? But it's, it's nice for a moment <laughs> when you smile at each other. It's nice. We feel good when somebody smiles at us, don't we? <laughs> huh? Why? Why you are happy if somebody smiles at you? It's because the smile is a way of expressing some loving feelings, some appreciation. Smile means appreciation or means a salesman. Huh? <laughs> somebody wants to sell something to me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. As soon as I say, oh, you know, I just wanted to know where's the toilet, they go. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, so like, they are so sensitive, they felt that I didn't like the throwing of the bamboo. They stopped it, you know? Huh? Aren't they nice people? So, this is the, this is the, uh, the giving mercy, getting mercy. The Bhagavatam is always full of nectar, no? And this is about Narada Muni. Narada Muni was a kid and he got mercy by the sadhus. And he returned by helping, by being a helpful devotee. Then they did so many wonderful things. And then the next thing you know, he's Narada Muni. He's flying all around the world with his Veena sound and preaching up and down the world. Can you imagine how this sadhus, this Bhaktivedantas feel? You know where our little boy went? You know the one who was here eating our remnants and that? No, what did he do? He's just off in Goloka, he flies on the Veena all around and preaches like anything. So like that, when you're making a new devotee, and that new devotee starts doing some wonderful things. How do you feel about it? This is, this is, you're like, wow, the guy he joined here, wow. Uh -huh. He's now, he opened a new thing, he did this, he did that. That's such a good feeling, you know? When your child is successful in life. And here, this is, now serving is also mentioned here. Giving, getting served, doing mercy. How did he say it? It said, um, Mercy of the devotee, service to devotee's face, and taking shelter of the Guru. So you take shelter of the Guru because you have some face. If you don't have no face, why in the world should you want to have a Guru? A Guru is not a decoration. So Guru Parampara is something coming by grace of Prabhupada. By grace of Srila Prabhupada, all these things have come to us. Really? I don't, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing here. But <laughs> that was the grace. The costless grace. And by that costless grace, he sent me out to preach. He sent me out on my life missions. He's, he sent me to countries where I didn't speak the language. I didn't know one word of Portuguese when I arrived in Brazil and I was made the temple president. Can you imagine this? Neither did the devotees know me there. I had been just an enthusiastic Sankitan devotee from Germany and a little bit experience in Europe, but that's all. And before I knew it, I got there, I got there with a letter. He is the new temple president. <coughs> and why? Because the other devotees were brand new, and the temple president, an American who had opened this temple, he just split overnight. And he left the temple with $20,000 in debt. He was like a, he was a wheeler dealer. He got, he got two combis on credit, some other. So the combis were there, but they were not paid for. Some other got the credit. Jai Guru Dev, Jai Jai. Yes. And then he rented a house in the middle of Sao Paulo, which was three houses with a park in the middle. And that place was costing $3,000 a month, but 30 years back. Here, 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 Guru Dev. This is your seat. Oh. <laughs> So, so when the GBC of that time got the letter that Achuta, that was his name, had just disappeared overnight, and the temple in Sao Paulo was in danger, at that time I appeared there on, on an assignment totally different. My assignment was to make a record of Lord Je George Harrison, the Radha Krishna album in Caracas, to, in Venezuela, to do some collection. That was the original idea. It was totally Krishna's tricky trickiness, you know? <laughs> I mean, total trickiness. I went all over North America, I got the whole shit, see? Then I was in Venezuela and then he, he told me, 
Oh no, it was like that. Even the, the call came from Brazil. The temple president left and this place is in a jump. So after that, I was chanting jump. Going up and down, chanting my heart. And my mind says, why don't you go to Sao Paulo and help? Why don't you go to Sao Paulo and help? I've never been in Brazil. I didn't know what I meant. But I had this feeling, why don't we? Because I heard that the temple president. Now, I had been temple president in Sweden before. And in a way, I was put into this project of the record of George Harrison. That was uh, because there were some switches of authorities in, in Europe. And so I ended up there. <clears throat> Again, I don't know how. What a mystical, what a thing. I could tell you many more funny details in this regard, but not only I was sent there, I was sent there with $10,000 in my pocket to make the record in Venezuela. Because we knew that Venezuela and the world is, they don't have capital, so if we want to sell the records to them, we have to have some money. And that money we had collected in Sweden. So, oh Krishna. So then, I had this feeling, the same, at five o'clock at night, the GBC of those er that area, he called me. He said, why don't you go to Brazil and take <laughs> care of this place? <laughs> I said, well, I need authorization from my GBC in Europe for that, because I'm here on a different assignment. So he went on the telephone and called the guy in Europe can he go to Brazil to take over this? I was given permission. So here I was getting a ticket to Brazil. There was no flights from Venezuela to Brazil. There was only one flight, you fly to Bogota and from Bogota to South. So I got that. I went on the plane with this letter and when I got there uh, to Bogota, the flight was canceled. <laughs> so I had to stay one week in Bogota. This my, was my yeah. first Colombia experience. Yeah. Yeah. And at that time, there was already a temple in Bogota. So I went to the temple, of course, and stayed with Javi. Ilan Chester was the temple president. So, and Hari Jamal was there. So it was, we had a nice time. <laughs> getting to know Colombia, but I was waiting for my next flight to, to Brazil. So when I arrived in Brazil, I went to the temple from the airport, and a sannyasi from Venezuela was there. He was also, they, they sent him because of the emergency there, so he had come there to see what's going on. So. He was in the temple and received me with a few devotees. And then I pulled out my letter, my credential, and I showed him the letter. It was so funny, it was funny, like a movie. And he was reading it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, he, he's of very dramatic nature, you know. He said, he said, so he said, okay. So then he got up. We were in a big office in a big room, and he opened the safe. There was a safe in the wall, like some houses have safes in the wall. So he opened that safe, and he pulled out a gun <laughs> and two packages of bullets. <laughs> and, and he came to me. I mean, I never had a pistol in my hand in my whole life. You know. He put the pistol in my hand and the bullets, and then he gave me a, a bunch of keys like that, because, and then he said, in his broken English, good luck. <laughs> so these are the funny things Krishna does, you know, you know, no, I mean, I, I trust when I put the bullets and the pistol back in the safe uh, and I stayed with the keys <laughs> and, and he said I'll stay one week to help you then I'm going off he went after one week 
and he took the old brahmacharis with him because yeah. they thought we better stay with the sannyas, you know, with this funny guy who just showed up here. Anyhow, this is how he became a president of Sao Paulo. Oh, my dear successor. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's, she's now taking, carrying this job. <laughs> Anyhow, some or other, it was wonderful. It worked out. We paid off all the debts. We, we, we even paid off the cars. We didn't lose the cars. Uh, and so, I didn't. I don't remember why I tell you this story now, but. Just to, to show you that Krishna consciousness just surprises. You don't know what's coming up next. You really don't know. And whatever is there in spiritual life, it is always it is always some some challenge. Many challenges are there. It's not easy to do anything. Just like you go on Sankirtani, you collect hundred dollars. That's not so difficult. Many people have collected hundred dollars in a day. Some of them even more. But then you come to the temple and you take all these hundred dollars and give it to the temple treasury and you stay with nothing in Haribo. No. That's something, you know. That means you are giving up the fruitive <coughs> results Many people think, hey, why don't I do this for my own pocket? In one week I have thousand dollars. <coughs> why should I do this for the temple? How many people went to the temple, got the idea of the temple and then tried to do the same thing separately? How many? Thousands. They, the imitation goes on everywhere. People imitate. Oh, many people. People want to imitate even every temple, run short. He, he was approached by mafia people in, who were like his, his painting clients and they were telling him, hey, why don't we make another temple? You know, we can do one, miti miti. <laughs> half for you, half for me. <laughs> because they saw the temple is working, there's devotees, so said, great thing, let's try this also. So, the, the dynamics of running a temple, now this is one thing many devotees tell me, Oh, we have no devotees, oh, we have no devotees, oh, we have no devotees. <laughs> Help us, give us some devotees. Yeah, I'd say magic, how many you need, no? <laughs> see, no? Uh, what you need, Brahmins, women, men, doesn't matter. Uh, but, I tell you, <coughs> I tell you, even if I give somebody a devotee, like I know this person is a little spaced out here, it usually doesn't work. Why? Because he thinks now I send him a slave. <coughs> he thinks now he can do whatever he wants with them. In a way, in a way, not that bad, no? But he, he don't appreciate it. Like if I have your help today, then it's because you give your love and your freedom. Nobody told you to to do anything. Nobody told you you have to be in India, you have to be in Germany. This is just by Krishna's mercy happened to you this way. Nobody told Madhusudan Maharaj that he should give up his, his career in, uh, of becoming a doctor. But he became a doctor. He's a doctor of the soul. And that he has to be 100% because what this is, you know, we have to look after people and, and serve them. So, but the, the thing is, if you want to get people to help you, then you learn how to beg. Beg them. Please. Be so kind. Don't reject my request. <laughs> Without you, I cannot do it. <laughs> Be so kind and help out. Vishnu, help out! Don't be indifferent. You're supposed to look after this temple. This is your land here, not mine. So, begging people. Narayani knows that, I always beg her. Narayani, please help me. <laughs> Come on. Huh? It's a fact. Each one. Of course, some people you don't have to beg. 
because they're simply naturally surrendered and take responsibility. And they just sit there, what I got to do? Okay, and they do it. But I also beg them. I begged you to stay in Buenos Aires in the fire. Didn't I? Please stay. Ariada, we need you here. That's why you stayed five years there. And tolerated the difficulties, the cold winters, the, the, the inundations, and difficult life in New Vendam. So, you better learn how to beg people for Krishna. That is also giving mercy. That is giving mercy. You're begging them to be with you. You're begging them to do some service. And then they still may not do it. Just the fact that you beg somebody doesn't mean they will do it. I mean, you have to beg so much that he will feel, oh, maybe I should help this begging devotee. He's so nice. I feel so touched. And that is my life, begging people, and begging everybody, begging, please do service, please do things. And some people do it naturally, and some people don't do it very naturally, and some people don't do it at all. And some, sometimes people do the opposite. All this is possible, but if you want to have people to be with you on your team, learn how to beg. <laughs> <laughs> Salute. Well, well, what does it mean? For example, begging means you beg people to make sacrifice. You know, I don't beg people to come and take prasad. They come by themselves. <laughs> I just have to make sure I got enough prasad for all the people who come. But to, I'm begging people to make sacrifice. Like in India, if I would invite everybody here, put the sign up, come and join this temple, then many people will come because it's so nice, but they will not necessarily want to do service here. It will be a different, like I think the, uh, our Bon Maharaj got like 50 letters of people who said, I have no money, but I want to stay the rest of my life in an ashram, can I come? <laughs> This is not bad if they're real, if they're real devotees, but real devotees you don't, that you have to show first. You have to show that you are ready to serve. So, and unfortunately, or we don't have, in ISKCON or in Chaitanya, we can give all these addresses to, to Swami Maharaj. Maybe he can invite them in his house. Maybe he can deal with them. It's actually a good idea. Hmm? Good idea. Because Swami Maharaj has so much space in his, in his temple and he has no people. So maybe some of them become very useful to him. Please remind me of that. No? We call Swami Maharaj. Because you don't know, it's, 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 it's unspecified, unqualified. Is somebody real? Is not real? Is he doing something real? You don't know. You know, in the Western world, when somebody wants to stay with us, we don't know who he is. Maybe he's on some medication. Maybe he is uh, uh, thrown out of his job. Maybe his wife kicked him out. Who knows why somebody wants to join the temple? Why did you join the temple? <laughs> Let's ask this question. Why did you join the temple honestly? Or why did you join Krishna consciousness? I start with myself. Because I was a hopeless hippie and I was really looking for some real connection in life. Let's see, why did you join the temple? Quick, one, one answer, please. Values? Huh? Values? You were looking for values. Hariyala, why did you join the temple? Looking for answers in my life. Looking for answers in your life. Vishwarupa, why did you join the temple? Yeah, also. 
maybe because of the last year before. So we hope. We have brought him out. Why did you join the temple? Well, because I, I feel the necessity to, to be true in my life. It's all my deeds. And then I, I feel there, all the way. <coughs> for changing the life, to be honest. To change your life. Maharaj. Lo mejor que suicidarme. Great. Maharaj. Shelter? Looking for shelter. Swami Maharaj. Higher meaning. Huh? Higher meaning. Higher meaning. Maharaj. Prasad. Prasad. No, no, no. I was on the edge of uh, suicide also. And, uh, they gave me a <laughs> Second life be safe. Vrindavan uh, Chanda, no choice. <laughs> 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 That's why he stayed. Vishnu. <laughs> Change for life. Kishori. Auf Deutsch. Warum bist du zum Krishna Hussein gekommen? Warum? Das ist mein Leben. Ich weiß nicht. Das ist alles für mich. Kein besonderer Grund? Alles ging schlecht in deinem Leben? Nein. No. Einfach so. Einfach so. Ich weiß nicht. Mohini, why you? Uh, I wanted to worship God, uh, feeling at home. And I feel at home. Dein Bhakti. Searching for true knowledge to teach my students. I was a professor. Mm. Culpa de los devotos, te hizo devota. A little bit more explanation. Me cautivaron mucho. Le cautivaron. Sí, su alegría, la unión, la disciplina. Le robaron el corazón. La daini. Como buscando una filosofía práctica y personas que vivieran eso de verdad. Comunidad. I was empty. I needed something more special in my life. Uh huh. The real. Yo llegué porque mi hermana me llevó, pero lo que más me cautivó fue como el amor y y como esa cariño que me ofrecían a uno cuando era. Pues yo buscaba muchas respuestas y cuando llegué al templo, quedé cautivada también por el amor de familia, ¿no? Que se podía ver, que se, que se brinda. Es que cuando hace un bhajan, tipo, me arrepié. Eh, ah, quiero ficar aquí. Un bhajan me conquistó. Me da por curiosidad. Y entonces me enamoré por los negocios. Yo llegué por acaso. Yo fui a un trabajo de la facultad. Okay. Eu cheguei por acaso. Eu fui fazer um trabalho da faculdade e aí fiquei assim, gostei dos devotos, da alegria. Isso um trabalho sobre os devotos? Sobre consciência de Cristo. Ah. 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 Well, como é o verso no Bhagavad Gita que diz que quatro pessoas chegam à consciência de Cristo? Como é o verso? Okay, translation. Four kinds of people surrender to me. Those who are suffering, those who are uh, who need uh, money, those who are. Uh, Looking for the truth and the sage. Those who are curious and those who are wise. So we have an interesting mixture here, no? Uh, of uh, great suffering, some need of money. Actually, nobody spoke about money. Curious, very curious about the higher connection and wise. Yeah, some wise people also.
But you see, this is the practical thing. You come to Krishna consciousness because something is capturing you. And this being captured, that is really, really wonderful. The mercy of Krishna has come to capture us. So, conclusion. The mercy of the devotee is that you beg them to serve. A devotee he gives, spiritual master gives to his disciple the holy name of Krishna and service. The practical engagement and service. This is really like in Cuba. Cuba is a very interesting place because the people are so poor, they are so much in need that almost everybody is on the Arta level. It means everybody is looking how to get a penny here, how to get a penny there. And beg, borrow or steal, it's the principle there, like you can really say it, because they'll take whatever way they can get. Huh? Begging, borrowing or stealing. So this, because the need is so, if I open an ashram in Cuba, I say we have a feast for everybody three times a day, you know, click, that thing is food. Hmm? People, they're so in need of food. I mean, they, they, they get food to not die, but otherwise, you know, uh, I, don't, I, I think the majority of Cubans never in their life tasted an olive. Hmm? Or, or some little fancy food stuff. Forget it. They don't have it unless they're rich, rich, somewhere in the high ups, no? But on the market is nothing. You have to go to Cuba. There is a there is a nice place for ice cream, <coughs> like this, with ten, with twenty tables, marble tops, everything and in a nice area close to the beach, and it's ice cream, it says. So you go inside. <laughs> There's three people working there. They even have uniforms, you know? Even they look like. So, you say, what ice cream you have? They say, oh, we have no ice cream. <laughs> wait, 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 you have no ice cream? Uh, when will you get ice cream? We don't know. <laughs> when you had ice cream last time? That's, I think three months ago. <laughs> you say, well, okay, give me, a, give me a glass of water. No, we don't have water either. <laughs> you have no water? No, we don't have water. Then, then you say, but wait, 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 wait. Who pays your salary? The government. We're government employees. So then finally in desperation you say, well, is there anything you sell? <coughs> yes, we have cigars. Oh. The only thing you can get in the ice cream parlor is a cigar. <coughs> so, Not even a mermaid. Well, I mean, they have no fruits. Fruits you can get on the street sometimes. <coughs> so that is a, is a, is a just a, such an amazing, difficult situation there. Then you cannot imagine how, how we're going to preach Krishna conscious there. How we're going to attract people. How we can get them to do devotional service. It, I mean, I know so many Cubans from Miami, and so they're just normal, wonderful people like everybody else. They're not special, but they're definitely hardworking people. And it's a very colonialized. Many people come from Cuba, they look like Europeans, mm -hmm. because they had like many people who went there in the past, like colonializing <coughs> Cuba. Of course, you get many black people also from the black colonies, from the slaves they took there. So you get all kind of a blend from Cuba. But to be actually in the island and do something for this island to give mercy to the people isn't exactly easy. 
Of course, if you give out prashadam to thousands of people, prashadam is always okay, but you have to have also kind of, you know, how much money are you going to take from one place to give out prashadam in another place? But even giving prashadam is not allowed by government. No? No, because they say, what do you think? Our people are starving? It's bad publicity. So they don't even let you give free prashadam. It's against the law. So even that is not easy. It's crazy. It's like it's a that I I didn't know. Well, but you can do it in the temple. Yeah, in the temple, but on the street, no. To to, to have giving free prasadam on the street, the authorities will come. What are you doing? You know, you saying that we're not feeding our people because everyone's getting food from the government. So it's like you're saying like the government's not doing their job. You're criticizing the government by doing that. It's hard. Mm. It's hard to win there. Mm. Well, you can sing in the street. Yes, and that's reason <laughs> because Ramesh went to Cuba, and he was singing in the street, and they arrested him. Mm. They said, "You get out of here. We don't want you singing here." That's maybe ten years ago. Huh? <laughs> Anyhow, so begging people and giving service to people, this is really the only thing. I think the best thing for Cuba is the Oki distribution. <laughs> to simply go around and give paper to people. One sheet with a nice preaching message on it. We have many preaching messages called Messages of the Soul, yeah. the Seva has. And even you can ask them for a little donation. Because it's not that the Cubans don't want to give a donation. They are also very generous people, but <laughs> what can they give? No, they have no money, they have nothing. But uh, I think for one sheet, they can give something. I think that is what, that's the most appropriate Sankitan there, with yoga messages, with, with... But I don't know how... How many do you want to give the address like this? Mm. It also has to be really f found out what is the best way to preach okay. there. Anyway, this is just a question. The devotees have to find a way to give mercy to people and to uh, engage people in service. If the guru doesn't engage you in service, then what, you have, what, what will you do? You have nothing else to do. So, by the grace of Prabhupada, he engaged me in service. I'm st still uh, trying. I gave Madhusuna Marsh the job to make this thing. I made a little drawing on a piece of paper. I would do it like this and like that. Interestingly, when we got this place, we adapted everything. This temple, this small temple there, that was constructed here before. I didn't make this time, I just repaired a little bit, the roof was falling in, but so otherwise stayed and then we put this on top and adapted it and connected it with this house to also have some space on top of this and you see this is a very nice offices, very nice facilities. So actually this was all Madhusuda Maharaj's work, no? Paramahansa Maharaj is always there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We should give credit to Paramahansa Maharaj, I agree. <laughs> uh, Paramahansa Maharaj made the metal tubes. This is downstairs. Anyway, very <coughs> wonderful. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Mayapur. What are we going to do today? Huh? <laughs> I'm always waiting for the devotees to arrive, to include them. But they come today. Like going to Nishingapali or something, I wanted to include the other devotees, the smaller. You have not been to Bhaktivinoda Thakur, no? Mm -hmm. 
also not to the Godroom Mat. Unfortunately, our Sanyasi Mat is already gone, already gone to Calcutta. So. Ambika Kanna, no? Yeah, yeah.